So I think it's pretty safe to say that no matter what job you're applying for, you're always nervous before your interview. Especially if you really genuinely want that job, you want to do everything in your power to make sure that that interview goes well. And it would just be so nice if you would know the questions up front that they were going to ask you, so that way you could prepare for them ahead of time. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new. My name is Rachel and in today's video I'm going to be telling you some questions that you may be asked in your interview as a dental hygienist. So if you didn't know, I am a registered dental hygienist myself. So I'm going to go through some questions that even I have been asked in real life so that you have an idea of what you're walking into. If you did miss last week's video, this kind of goes hand in hand with that one. It was questions that your interviewer may ask you, which would be the office manager or either the doctor. So I will leave that link down below. So get your notebook out, get ready, and really think about what you would say, how you would answer these questions so that way you're more prepared when you go into your real interview. So I think one of the questions that I almost always get asked in my interviews is why did you become a dental hygienist? And really think about that, like what drew you to this profession? Was it the money? Was it taking care of people? Was it teeth? Like what was it that made you think in your head, hey, this is it for me? Why are you so passionate about it? Where do you see yourself in five years? This is also another big question that I've been asked, I think, in every interview that I've ever had. So basically they want to know, are they hiring you just to work there for a few years or do you plan on being there long term? If you're having children, do you plan on being a stay-at-home mother? Like they have to prepare for these things ahead of time, so they kind of want to get an idea of where your plan in life is going to be heading. How much time would you prefer or do you need during certain appointments? So they want to see what you are capable of. They want to see what you're comfortable with as far as your appointment times. Because some people will say, I need 60 minutes minimum. And there are definitely quite a few dentists who are going to say that is not going to happen. So you have to really be honest with yourself and with the person who's interviewing you. Otherwise, you're going to set yourself up for something that you don't really want to be in. And with that question, they may ask you, okay, well, say you answer 60 minutes. Would you be willing to do it within 45 minutes? So that's something, again, that you really have to ask yourself. And here's the golden question that nobody ever wants to get, but somehow always seems to pop up. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I hate getting this question because it's like, Okay, do I talk about the fact that I do YouTube videos and what I do in my spare time? Do I talk about just everything career related? Do I tell people that I'm weird and like what do I tell people? Another question is what would you like to be paid hourly? A million dollars an hour of course, like what? What do you mean what would I like to be paid hourly? What do you honestly need to make in order to cover all your bills, live your life, pay off your student loans? And with this question, I've been asked this a few times, they might ask you what you are currently making. So if you're already in an office and you're not just straight out of school and you've been doing this for a few years, they want to know what you've accepted to work for right now. Is she going to expect a lot more out of me? Definitely don't settle for anything less than what you deserve and you know you deserve. What made you apply to work for this office? So what is it about this office that intrigues you? What makes you want to work here? Or are you just desperate and you really need a job? Did you really like how we run things here? Do you hear really great things about our practice? Like what is it about us that makes you want to be a part of our team in particular? And do your research guys. Like research the offices before you go in there for an interview. See what the reviews are from patients. How are they treating patients? What are you working at now? So they're going to want to know the days that you're working. They're going to want to know the hours that you're working because they want to see, okay, well, if I'm offering you a two-day position, are you still going to keep your current job or are you just going to work for us? Or if it's full-time, are you willing to completely leave your current job to come work for us? You know, what are you capable of? What are you used to working? Are you going to be okay with going from maybe two days a week to six days a week or vice versa? And with that question comes, how flexible is your schedule? So again, if you are going from part-time office to part-time office just to try to fill up your week, how flexible are you if, let's say, you know, someone else that works a different day than you 
needs a day off or goes on vacation, are you going to be able to fill in those hours or are you guaranteed that you're going to be at this other office? Another question that you could get is how do you diagnose perio? And my short answer is, well, technically I can't. I can't diagnose. But obviously they want to know like what things do you look for? When would you say, okay, like this is when it crosses the line. This is when I would say, hey, this patient has perio and then kind of co-diagnose with the doctor. What are your biggest strengths? So for me, I would say that my strengths are that I'm very motivated. I am very self-sufficient. I work really well by myself, but I'm also a really great team player. I'm not afraid to just jump in wherever I'm needed. And I'm very concerned with my patient as a whole and not just about their oral health. So of course, with that question comes, well, what are your biggest weaknesses? And for me, I would say that sometimes I probably care too much. I'm a perfectionist, so sometimes certain cases may take me a little longer than others because I can't bear to let that patient leave if I know that there's still a speck of calculus on their teeth or a spot of stain. But I mean, you can always put a spin on your weaknesses to put, turn them into strength. So yes, I might care too much about my patients sometimes, but the fact is like, I want them to be happy and healthy as a whole and not just in the oral health department and yes I may be a big perfectionist but that's because again I truly genuinely care about my patients and if they're going to be paying and coming for a service I want to make sure that that's actually what they received because if that was me I would expect the same. What are your hobbies? What do you do in your free time? Again another big question that I probably always get to talk about what makes you happy? What makes you you? Do you like to go on walks? Do you have kids? Do you have sports that you do? Are you involved in other activities? Let them know what type of person that you are. How do you handle high stress situations? How well do you work under pressure? Obviously if you worked in this profession for longer than a day, you know that your whole life as a dental hygienist is working under pressure because you're constantly under the clock. You're always on a time crunch, everything's on a time schedule, and you're constantly back and forth all day long trying to manage your time with every single patient. So they just wanna make sure that you're going to be able to get done what needs to get done to the best of your abilities, but also not be behind all day. How do you handle patients showing up late? So they could have a policy on this and say, hey, you know, you have to see patients even if they're 15 minutes late, you have to see patients no matter what. Or they might say after 15 minutes, we cut it off. But in your personal opinion, how would you handle that situation? What do you think that you should do? And my answer, just for example, would be, you know, if a patient shows up 10, 15 minutes late, I would be willing to do maybe just their exam and the radiographs if they're due for them, but I would not do their POFI or whatever else they were scheduled for. What do you need to see in patients to recommend scaling and root planning? Again, every office kind of has a little bit of a different opinion on this. So they're going to want to see where you are coming from so that they can co-diagnose with you properly. How comfortable are you in reviewing treatment plans with the patients? So you have a new patient, let's say, come in and they have a huge page worth of dental work that needs to be done. And the doctor kind of goes over everything with the patient and then the doctor leaves and the patient's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And they look at you like a deer in the headlights and they're like, I have no idea what's happening. So they're gonna start asking you questions. Do you feel comfortable with that? Are you comfortable explaining a root canal? Are you comfortable explaining procedures for an extraction, a crown, a bridge work? You know, whatever it is that the patient needs, are you comfortable explaining that treatment to the patient? I've had this question asked once, and it was, do you believe that it is your job to do instruments in sterilization? The reason why they asked this question, I know, is because they wanna see if you truly are a team player or if you think that your only job is to worry about your schedule and what you do. And in my opinion, yes, it is my job because when I am done with a patient, those are still my instruments. That is no one else's responsibility to take care of those for me. If they have time and they do it on their own, that's one thing, but I would never expect someone else to clean my room or do my instruments or do my sterilization. I just, I just personally wouldn't. But they wanna see how you think in that certain scenario. Are you familiar with X software? They want to know if you're able to use the software that they currently have in the practice or if they're going to have to take time to teach you how to use it. 
What do you look for in a dental office? For example, my answer would be, I'm looking for a family. I'm not just looking for a job or a career. I'm looking for a place that I can go where it feels like a second home to me. Like the people that I work with, I can trust with anything and I can rely on with anything. I want to be able to have time to build genuine relationships with my patients. And I look for an office where we all work together as a team and it's not just every man for himself. And then if the interview goes really well, the last question that you're probably going to receive is, how soon can you start? Are you ready to just be done with your office and quit the next day? Or are you going to give them a two week notice? Because they need to know how soon they're able to fill the position. Are they going to have someone fill in before you start or can you start right away? So that's a pretty long list of questions that you can expect to receive when you are at your interview for a position as a dental hygienist. Like I said, a lot of those are honestly questions that I have been asked before, and hopefully some of my example answers help you along with answering those questions yourself. If you've been doing this profession for a while, what are some questions that I missed? What are some questions that you've been asked in interviews? Let me know down in the comment section down below so that I can help other viewers who are watching this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. Hit that thumbs up button down below. If you enjoy dental hygiene related videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I do make a ton of videos related to the subject because it is my profession. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.